Hey folks, welcome back to the Hack Shack. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how you deal with a dead NVRAM battery on a Spark. Specifically, this Spark Station 5 I am keep working on. Um, we're going to go over two ways, one pretty easy way, but first we'll cover the uh, kind of fun slash hacky way to deal with it. That's pretty interesting and I've done it before in the past. I hope you uh, will like this one and let's get right into it. Real quick, one thing that's different about this than a PC is that the NVRAM is combined with the oscillator and the battery in one unit, so it's not like a separate battery. This can cause a little confusion, but it's just how this architecture does things. This can seem a bit odd coming from a PC, where it, when you have a dead BIOS battery, you can just swap the battery out and you're good to go. Now, one of the handiest resources is this uh, Sun NVRAM uh, FAQ file or link. That I'll share here. I've got the link in the description. It is like the top thing that you'll be leaning on when you do this. And for the hacky method that we're going to be showing here first, uh, these are the two things I got from Amazon. Um, some coin cell batteries and these little battery holders. Uh, more than I needed, but I'm sure I'll use them for something else. I've already got some other stuff like solder and small wire, so I didn't pick any of those things up. Of course, the first thing we need to do is get the old NVRAM off the board. There's these two little handles on the edges. Um, you just kind of have to pull up on them. Just be careful, <laughs> but it will come loose without tearing anything up. Also, you want to uh, remove the actual NVRAM chip from that little holder, the thing with the ears. It seems like they're one piece, but they will separate. Okay, so now once I've got the uh, holder separated from the NVRAM chip. I've got it mounted in my vise and this is when you just start grinding away with your uh, Dremel tool or Dremel like tool and what you're trying to do on this end is expose these two little uh, pieces you'll see where the battery kind of connects down to the chip and you just kind of take your time you know if you go too aggressive you will kill the thing but uh, if you kind of just ease into it and, and watch yourself as you go here Eventually you will see where you get the two little traces exposed. And I started out with this attachment and you'll see after a while here, I'll switch to something else that's a little bit smaller. So I don't have to take as much material away at one time, but there, there's one peeking through right there, you see. And uh, the other one will kind of show itself here shortly. There we go. So now you can see the two places that we're talking about. And what we're doing, we're trying to expose those so we can uh, attach the leads that we're going to solder onto our coin cell there for that. Here's where I've switched to that smaller uh, tool that I mentioned earlier to kind of work some more of the material out. I'm trying to adjust it and I think I probably go off screen here a little bit. Sorry about that. I didn't quite realize that till it was too late. But just trying to work a little bit more of that material off from around the edge and expose some of those uh, the places I can try to solder to here shortly. So that's what I was trying to do right here. And right here, I'm just taking some uh, isopropyl alcohol and cleaning it off the best I can. Now this is where I borrowed my wife's hot glue gun and put a little drop of hot glue so I can stick the uh, button cell holder down there, as you can see, and let it uh, sit for a second or two, and it uh, kind of gets firmed up. Then I'm just going to reposition things here. Now I'm going to want to try to uh, get a little small piece of wire here and strip the ends and uh, get uh, my leads soldered on for the positive and the negative. I'm using the same color wire for each one, but I figure if this is mine, it's fine. I, I know what they're going to. So that's what you're going to see here is uh, when I'm soldering the leads on. I've got the positive done, so now I'm flipping over and I'm doing the uh, negative lead here. Now 
Now here's where I'm repositioning things and I'm getting ready to actually uh, position the uh, jumper wires I've made and actually get uh, attached them to those two parts that I kind of exposed when, with the uh, rotary tool there. Now this one is not great. There's a little bit of a piece kind of sticking out, but uh, it held and I'm not worried about it. Once you see my, oh, uh, it's actually finished here. There's a little bit of, a little bit pointier than I like, but it held and it works. So I'm okay with it. And here's where I'm just getting one of the button cells out and uh, get ready to put it into the holder there. Once that's done, it's ready to go put inside the spark. So we just, uh, without the holder from before, we're just putting this directly into the socket. All right here, I wanted to stick this image back up. Just uh, take and pause if you want to here. Notice the orientation where the little ST is on that chip. And then the, as you're looking at this photo right here, the wire to the right is the positive and the wire on the left is the negative. So when it comes time to program the uh, prom, you're going to uh, use some commands kind of like what you see right here and it'll be based on uh, what the MAC address is that you're wanting to have and the host ID that you're wanting to have and that'll be what you kind of walk through um, and get from following along with the FAQ I mentioned earlier. Okay now here's where I've booted up. Notice the MAC address at the top there is all zeros so we know we're not where we want to be and I'm going through the commands and putting in the MAC address that uh, that I noticed that it had before from uh, previous screenshots. So I'm sticking all that stuff in here in the host ID stuff based on what the FAQ said. And uh, the last line that was kind of long, that's where I think you're, um, you're doing the checksum calculation right there. That line that's typing right now is uh, the checksum calculation. And then uh, doing the diag uh, switch disable. Then you can do the dot ID prompt command there and it will uh, actually show you the contents so that's pretty cool so now the mac address there you'll notice that it's stuck so now i'm actually taking the power out and then hooking it back up to make sure it still really truly sticks showing us that the battery's working and see the mac address is there as before and this is where i'm uh, doing a really poor job of uh, trying to <laughs> figure out how to make it auto boot the uh, disc too because i want to not power it on now just to go straight into next step and uh I fumble through this for a second or two, actually several seconds, uh, and then you'll see I got, finally get that figured out. And uh, yeah, I'm setting this boot device. See, it's disk net. I'm going to set the boot device to disk two. And once I do that, then we're good to go. And I'm going to pull it again and then power it up, and you'll see the MAC address is still there, and it's going to go straight into next step. See there, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you get that far, it's worked. Now let's talk about the easy method and it's super easy. You just go to Mauser and get uh, one of these guys here. I got a link in the uh, show notes and you order it and you wait. And when it arrives, you take out the old one and you stick in the new one just like this. And then uh, it'll be empty and you'll go through the same steps as I showed you with the uh, hacked one with the add-on battery. It's essentially the same thing for when you go back through and uh, set your um, all your options for your new one here. So uh, for the Spark 5, you can still get this. It's not the same exact matching uh, part number, but it's it works. It's compatible. And so if you don't want to mess around with uh, the, the little make your own, you just buy one and swap it out. It works like a champ too. And let me also note real quick, doing the one from Mouser is a lot cheaper than getting a Sun part for the Spark 5 at least, um, probably about half the price. Hey, if you made it this far, we hope you enjoyed the video and we hope you'll come back again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.